now to something, I have a, like a final section of the talk just talking about a little bit mixed uh, things about graphics and, and uh, graphics options and performance. So here's the list of, uh, well, if you played the beta, you probably saw similar stuff here. Although in the beta, not all of the graphics options uh, worked. They were kind of a little bit broken. Uh, we've fixed that up now for the final, uh, final release. The beta was primarily intended for testing the back end and the multiplayer and the core gameplay and things like that. Uh, in overall, our graphics options are, we have four uh, major categories of uh, the low quality, the medium, high, and ultra. So um, this is sort of to give people an idea of, of uh, what, how we intend the, the, these options to be used. Uh, low is really the, well, of course, it's the lo absolute lowest possible in our graphics. But as we have a multiplayer game, we can't scale it down and make it look too bad. Well, we can make it look, uh, <laughs> it has to look respectable in general because we, we can't make a game that looks just absolute shit on the lowest, <laughs> lowest quality levels. Uh, people that have some kind of graphics card still want to be able to play it and have a good experience, of course. But even more importantly, in a multiplayer game, you can't just disable all everything. You can't just, uh, because that increases the visibility too much. If you disable all our particles and disable all our shadows, it becomes like uh, Quake Arena, Quake 3 Arena. And that might be fun in itself, but it's not really fair in, in the, uh, to play a multiplayer game of, uh, with the type of visual style that we have. So we have a pretty high min spec in general for the game um, of an 8,800 GT card um, that, that's sort of designed for this low, low detail. You might not have the best absolute experience, of course, but the game will run, and, and it's, it's, it won't be too unfair in multiplayer. That's the idea, at least. Uh, then we have the medium setting. There we actually enable a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of the graphics options that we have. Um, but not all of them. We use the, the SSA or the cheaper stuff. And this is sort of intended for mid-range uh, DX10 uh, cards uh, uh, that, that, can, that are quite a bit better than the 8800, but not as good as the new modern DX11 cards. Uh, but you, you can still get a pretty good visual quality. But then we also have the, the high graphics mode. And that's really what gaming is designed for. Uh, it's designed for people to use that, because you get good frame rate from it. it well, but it's always a personal preference. Do you want 60 FPS? and you? Or, uh, or, well, even higher FPS, or do you want a little bit lower FPS but even higher quality? So it's, it's difficult to say exactly who, uh, what's the best choice for you, but for hardcore gamers, well, it's usually 60 FPS or nothing. Um, but uh, medium runs well and high runs really well on a 560 Ti, or, well, a GeForce 580 will run high really well at 60 plus FPS. And it has everything enabled, the high mode, except uh, that some of them are not at the absolute highest uh, detail settings for it. So that's what we have the ultra for, where we sort of crank things up further, uh, the, um, uh, where the shadows are a little bit higher, a little bit uh, sharper, and the terrain is a little bit more tessellated. Uh, and also, we have the uh, big setting that we have in ultra is that uh, our NTL thing. We use uh, our multi sampling there, which is really, really memory consuming and really uh, performance consuming in general, but it looks better, but it doesn't look Giant, it's not a giant step in visual quality, but it still looks good. So if you have a multi-GPU machine, like the ones we're playing here, like a dual 580 or a dual 560 for that matter also, Ultra, you can run that at 60 FPS then. And that's usually the way we demo the game also. So I did mention the anti-aliasing, and that's something we've been spending quite a lot of time on. Uh, because anti-aliasing is sort of, both from a visual point of view, it's, an, it's annoying. It's something that flickers on the screen. You see pixels moving around. Uh, and it's, it's not very pleasant to look at such a picture, but it's also annoying from a, from a gameplay point of view because it, it, dis, it, it, detract, it, it distracts the eyes, uh, your eyes. You sort of find these some small crawlies. Uh, you get pretty used to it, though. Many games have a lot of aliasing. But we, we've tried to spend quite a lot of time on this, and it's especially difficult with deferred shading because then you can't use the traditional multi-sampling. The traditional MSA modes where you just do forward rendering and render with 8x MSA or something like that. We have to do have to spend a lot more special care to do it with deferred shading because this GBAR that I talked about, that has to be rendered out with much higher resolution then. So we have multiple options here. We have the deferred, the, uh, yeah, you saw them in the graphics options. We have anti-aliasing deferred, as we call it, which is the MSA approach of using 2x or 4x uh, anti-aliasing. It's really having, 4x is really running the game in double the width and double the height, pretty much, but with some clever optimizations on top of that. Uh, or we have the post-processing uh, post anti-aliasing approaches also, which is where we use uh, FXAA, uh, which is technique NVIDIA, uh, Timothy Lottis that uh, NVIDIA developed. We have multiple quality settings also. That's re that is rendered at the ordinary resolution, but, and then it's a simple, well, not a simple, it's actually a pretty complex post-processing effect, but it's being added afterwards to try and fix up the picture. Uh, but once we added all these options, we also found that 
it makes a lot of sense actually to have support both of these at the same time for the ultimate uh, quality, and that's what we use for Ultra also. We combine both of these because MSA is really good at finding uh, uh, fixing aliasing due to geometry detail being being well small type of geometry details or foliage or that type of that type of that type of thing. But it's not that good at fixing edges because it's not. It's not done in HDR, that MSA. It's done in an earlier stage. So it's not as good at fixing uh, aliasing on very bright edges or, uh, and things like that. So, but on the other hand, the post-processing, uh, post-process and aliasing solution we have, that runs after the final picture has been rendered. So it runs in a different gamma space. And it, it finds those edges and smooths them out. But in, in, in itself, the, uh, the FXA is not that good at fixing aliasing due to thin geometry and stuff like that. So it's a combination of both makes it really good. But uh, this is, these are both completely optional features, but we think it improves the quality quite significantly. And oh yeah, I was talking about MSA, and here's one of the optimizations we have for MSA is that we will be just brute forcing and running everything, every, the entire scene super sampled and evaluating lighting four times for every, for every pixel. That's extremely expensive uh, and extremely wasteful also because you don't get that much, uh, de uh, m much out of it. So what we do instead is that we do selective super sampling for our, for our lighting when using the MSA mode. Uh, so we detect the edges that we actually have in the screen and only super sample those. So that significantly uh, improves the performance of the effect. But it's still a heavy effect, a big, big hit there. Uh, we're talking quite a bit about performance uh, in the game. And typically, when running games, when, well, when you guys run games, there's not really that many tools for tracking performance. There's, well, you can run fraps and you get a, a small FPS counter, or you can run, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's a couple of tools that show the GPU load and stuff like that, but they're not really that. Uh, good or that detailed. And especially CPU performance and performance over time is a little bit difficult to track. So we've added a couple of things in, in the engine to make it a little bit easier for, for hardcore gamers. Uh, first, of thing, first of all, we've added a, well, we've added back a console, classic PC console, where we have a whole bunch of console commands uh, that, that can be activated. <laughs> If I knew that was the feature that would get the most applause, we probably could have implemented that first and skipped all of the lighting stuff. And uh, that was a lot more time uh, to work on. Um, so that's cool. Uh, we, have, we, don't have, we don't have a huge amount of console commands, but I think we can, well, actually, the engine has huge amounts of console commands. We have around 3,000 commands, but we don't expose all of them. We expose just a select few, well, uh, quite, uh, I'm not sure if 100 of them or something, because you can't use the visualization modes that I was using here for take screenshots because someone will play and only show normal maps or something. That would be a bit unfair, I would say. I hope you agree also. Um, and we also have a, like a frap style FPS meter that's very simple, just showing up the screen with the activated console command. And we also have this, which I, I haven't seen in any. This is part of our development tools. We have a way more, even more advanced tools also. But this is a very cool thing that we usually play the game with uh, all, at all the time. We, it shows a. A graph, a yellow and a green graph. And the yellow graph is the CPU performance over each frame. Every pixel here, uh, this is our animating lines, every pixel is a frame. And the green is a, a GPU performance graph. So it, it counts in milliseconds. Uh, and, and you can see spikes here in performance, although it can be difficult to track down exactly what that spike is. But you can at least see if you have super stable performance or if you have some major problem or, or things like that. And ideally talk about it more on forums or report it to us and things like that. So I think that can be quite helpful. And here's a zoom in on that. So we have a, the middle line is sort of when you have 30 FPS, and the line, uh, uh, well, a little bit further down is uh, 60 FPS. And here we see here I got a couple of big spikes. I th think the two early ones when I, was when I took a screenshot myself, because then well, it takes quite some time to actually take a screenshot. Um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. And then the final thing and I want to mention is uh, our stereo rendering. Some of you guys have probably already played uh, BS3 in stereo here in the tournament. And that's actually something we've been working quite closely with NVIDIA with just now, just in, now in the end of the project once everything is uh, sort of coming together of doing really proper stereo rendering support. Because when you use deferred shading, uh, again, and not the more traditional rendering pipelines, you have to do it in a more custom way. You have to render two complete different pictures for, for the eye and not have it done automatically in the drivers with uh, three division otherwise supports because it doesn't work with the, our deferred shading. You instead have to do it, have implemented ourselves in the engine. And, and we've done that now for Plus by 2 that's in BF3, which is cool. And we actually render these two frames completely in parallel also. So if you have a, uh, have a better, well, quad core or even more CPUs, it, it scales up very nicely there, um, which is very sweet. It works with all the post processing and everything we talked about here. But 
as for rendering everything far, it's, it's really heavy. So you need a really good, CPU, really good config, ideally two GPUs or some like that. Uh, and you can play here. So that was uh, yeah, a little bit what I had to say. I have some summary here of some cool things. I think, personally, I think our game looks pretty sweet. I hope you guys agree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so really, really tried, have tried to try and combine the, this, the massive uh, Battlefield gameplay experience with the visual style uh, and, and the great visuals that we have and make it for PC, first and, for, for, first and foremost. And the, this is just the start. We, all of this that we put in, we put it into our engine, uh, the Frostbite 2 engine. And there's many games within EA and DICE going forward that will use the same engine. And I also think that you'll see quite a few other game developers sort of all, a little bit following our lead and, and release really competent PC versions going forward. So the future is bright. Very cool. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, you Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Really great. Um, you guys appreciate that talk? <laughs> Unreal. Unreal.